Good evening and welcome to our Sunday at 6 service. It's lovely to see you here online in a time that we can't be together in person. And we are thinking about the parable of the sower this evening and I'm going to pray as we come together this evening. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that even in a time when we can't gather together in person, we can gather virtually. And Lord, as we think about the parable of the sower, Lord, give us your wisdom and your insight. Lord, show us how you seek to shape and mould us. And Lord, may we see more of your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things I've been thinking a lot recently about is the things we should be nurturing at this time in lockdown. And as we think about the parable of the sower, we find ourselves surrounded by questions about nurturing, about gardening, about tending, about planting. A man is sowing seed. What will that seed become? What conditions will it grow in? What makes it what it's going to be? I've come outside, as you'll see, to reflect on that question to my mum's garden path, which is populated by various things, flourishing things, struggling things, weeds, dead leaves, lots of things. Um, not, of course, that it's at its best in January. But I love the analogy of gardening in relation to us and our relationship with God, that God is a gardener, that he shows the same tending and care that I see in those people I know who love gardening too as they delight in some unpromising thing that grows into something wonderful. Uh, before we go any further, we're going to watch the parable of the sower in an animated form, which I hope you'll enjoy. One day, a farmer went out to sow some seeds. As he walked along, he threw the seeds wherever he went. Each seed was the same, bright and green and full of the potential for life. Some of the seeds fell on stony ground. There was nowhere for their roots to grow. They just sat there. Birds spotted the seeds from the air. They flew down and ate them up. Some seeds fell on rocky places where there wasn't much soil. They quickly grew at first but the soil was shallow. And when the sun came up, they withered and died because they had no root. Some other seeds fell among thorns. The seeds started to grow, but the thorns grew bigger and they choked the new plants, so they didn't produce any crop. They just disappeared. But other seeds fell on good soil. They grew and grew, strong and bright, and the life in the seeds bore an amazing crop, some with 30 grains, some 60, and some even a 100 grains of corn. So the parable of the sower leads us to some general questions at the outset. 
big questions, there are always lots of those, to dwell on and to digest and to reflect on bit by bit. What are our plans and priorities? What are we building? What are we becoming? And I'm aware that in lockdown, the chance to think about those things is a bit of a privilege for those up to their ears in ch children and work and stress. Self-reflection might be a distance away as more immediate concerns take up much more of our headspace. But perhaps it is as crucial when we're really up against it to think which way we're facing, even if we can only do it in 10 or 20 second chunks. In busyness and in stress and in fear and in anger, it's so easy to lose perspective and find that the things that shout the loudest are the only things that we're hearing no matter how unimportant or important they are relatively. And as I've been thinking about this, I wonder if we tend to be on a bunch of different spectrums, moving towards or away from different things, between love and fear, between hope and despair, between self-care and neglect, between peace and turmoil, and perhaps when we're most busy and stressed is when we need most fervently to cling on to the qualities and aspirations that we seek most strongly. So the parable of the sower, it's all about the soil. If we are the seeds, what kind of soil are we being planted into? It strikes me here that the analogy does break down a bit, that seeds don't actually have much choice in the matter of where they end up. But actually we have, in lots of ways, quite a lot of choice in relation to what we take on board, in relation to how we spend our energy and our time, where we situate ourselves. We're going to think about that a little bit more as we go along in this time together. But first of all, I was reflecting that the great thing about this parable is that it actually tells us who everyone is and what they represent in the parable, which isn't always the case. Each type of seed or place that the seed is planted or falls represents a particular kind of person and how they respond to God's kingdom. And at the outset, you see that this isn't about people who don't agree or who don't want to follow. It's about people who do want to get on board and for various reasons, they don't end up as deeply rooted as they could be. We're going to think a bit more about this in relation to all of this um, and have some time for personal reflection um, but first we are going to hear the song indescribable as we think about god's creation um, and this one is of course recorded by our wonderful christchurch worship band From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Creations revealing your majesty From the colours of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful Unsameable, struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, You are amazing God. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creations revealing Your From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable 
unattainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are further on this passage I think one really important thing to remember is that the context of this passage is God's abundant generosity that the seed is spread widely and liberally and at the end of the passage the parable notes that the good soil seed planted in good soil will yield a crop that is 30 or 60 or 100 times what has been sown when actually in the context this was written um, a good crop would be five or 15 times what's been sown. So it's not really dealing in proper real life figures. It's dealing within the generosity and abundance of God's kingdom. And also, actually, the seed is scattered with no sense of where it's going to fall, that good things are given without judgment and without reserve even though we can assume that God knows what's going to happen when the seed falls. So I'm going to think a little bit about the different kinds of soil on which the seed falls and give us a bit of time for reflection on what that might look like in relation to our own lives. So first of all, we have the thorny ground. Um, it's described in this passage as being choked by the cares of this world, by the love of wealth and by cravings for other things, which is quite a wide ranging list of things that might draw us away from God. And it strikes me within those lists, within that list, that there is a huge variety of things, that all of us have cares of the world, um, though sometimes this is translated as the anxieties of this age, which I think is interesting because it strikes me more as worldly things rather than the kind of 
you know, caring for children or doing jobs or things that people have been doing since time immemorial, but maybe the anxieties of this age, the things that we get caught up in and with. So rather than carry on talking at you, I'm going to give us some time to reflect individually and put up a question or a couple of questions that we might reflect on in relation to the things of this world that sometimes choke the way that we relate to God. So I'm going to put a couple of questions on the screen and then I'm going to make my face disappear because I think that will also be an aid to reflection. <laughs> um, and then just feel free to take a minute just to think about those things. So what one thing could we pay less attention to and what one thing could we pay more attention to? Are there things that we know are drawing us away from God? And are there things that we could do to focus more strongly on God? And what might that look like practically? Where might it fit into our day? Obviously, at this time, people have a huge variety of different commitments. Um, and our lives in the day to day will look very different depending on our life situation. But actually, what are the things that we can stop doing or that aren't helpful and what things might we pay more attention to? I'll just give us a minute and then bring us back together. We're now going to spend a little bit of time reflecting on the seed scattered on the path and the seed scattered on stony ground. So the passage says that the seed scattered on the path only lasts for a little while and then Satan comes and takes it away. And then on the stony ground, it's received with joy, but then pressures or persecutions make it unfruitful. And I want to think a bit about the kind of fears and temptations that sometimes lead us away from God. Just thinking about Satan for a minute, um, people vary in how comfortable they are with that kind of language. Um, but I tend to think that actually we can categorise things that tempt us or that draw us away from God as being things that we can pray against that we can ask God to come into and we don't have to think too closely about how we categorise that in terms of where it comes from because actually the most important thing is standing firm in God. So I've got a couple of questions for us to reflect on now about fears and temptations, about things that get in the way of our life with God um, and how we might respond to, to those or to the challenge um, to think about those. So I'm just going to, again, give us a minute to ask where fears and temptations draw us away from God. Are there specific things in your life um, that you feel are getting in the way of you living your Christian life as fully as possible? And how might you ask God to speak into it today?
And thirdly, what might good soil look like? What might bearing fruit look like? Um, and as I've been thinking about this, I've been mostly looking at the version of this parable in Mark's Gospel. But actually, I really like the words of Luke 8 on the parable of the sower, which says that we should hold fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patient endurance. So to close this bit um, of our gathering together, I'm going to pray that we would be able to do those things. So pray with me. Heavenly Father, as we reflect on this parable, we seek to be people who are good soil to be planted into. Lord, especially in these strange times, help us to hold fast in an honest and good heart, be people of integrity and love, and help us to walk forward step by step in a way that honours you, that we may be people who bear fruit. And Lord, give us the endurance and the hope and the strength that we need to keep on doing that. In Jesus' name, Amen. We're going to pray now. So I've got some images that fit with our sort of gardening theme. Um, we're going to go through and use those. Um, and at the end of each section, I'll close with, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. Lord, even in the time of COVID, we give you thanks for all the blessings that you have given us. Lord, help us to see those blessings and be aware of those blessings. And Lord, we praise you for all that you are and for all that you've done. Lord, we worship you for who you are, for the glory of your name. Lord, help us to keep remembering that day by day as we go out into a new week and throughout the week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, as we think about our own weeding in our lives, as we seek to root out the things that are not of you, that are not helpful, that are not productive. Lord, help us to be people who are aware of our own spiritual growth and of the things in our lives that need digging out. Lord, help us to share those things with trusted friends. Lord, help us to be vigilant in the times that we sense our faith growing cold or our attention wandering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray that we might people might be people who bear good fruit. Lord, that we would be people who share your light and your hope with others, who are people of joy and love and strength and peace in a world that so badly needs it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, Lord, for the world around us. We pray for our church in Greenwich and around the world. Lord, we pray for wisdom and integrity for its leaders. We pray that the church as a whole would be people of light and peace and a force for good in the community. Lord, show us how we can be that force for good as the parish of East Greenwich and grow us in those things. And Lord, we pray for our local community. We pray for Greenwich, we pray for businesses and organisations in these times of COVID. Lord, particularly those who are feeling desperate in this strange and economically so challenging time. Lord, we pray that aid and support would be given where it is needed. And Lord, we pray for those who live in really difficult situations. We pray for parents trying to homeschool and for teachers in schools trying to teach those children they have there. Lord, we pray for frontline workers, Lord, especially for our wonderful NHS staff and also for the emergency services 
and for all the different organisations that keep our society running at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for our world. And Lord, we pray that the end of COVID would come quickly. We pray for healing for all those in hospitals and at home with COVID. We pray for governments that they would make wise decisions, both in relation to COVID and in relation to all sorts of other things. Lord, we pray for the ongoing Brexit process. We pray for all the issues around the climate emergency. And Lord, we pray that our politicians would act with justice and love. And Lord, we pray for the new Biden administration. And Lord, we pray that in that very divided country, that there would be fresh hope and a fresh political agenda. And as we begin to draw our prayers to a close, we pray for all those who are suffering in mind, body or spirit. And Lord, in the silence of our hearts or out loud, we lift up before you those we know to be particularly in need of our prayers. Lord, we pray for all those in the parish who are ill, who live with chronic illness or who, who are undergoing medical treatment. We pray for all those who have been recently bereaved or who still suffer the ongoing reality of bereavement. Lord, we pray for those in difficult domestic situations and those who feel desperate for whatever reason. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you that we can bring our prayers to you, and we lift all these prayers to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are now going to join together in the song, Build My Life. And that will be followed by a final prayer of blessing. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus 
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to the So we finish with a final prayer of blessing. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon us, his children, that we may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all peoples. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen.